people that aren't liked by the Bitcoin community, the bankers, man, their lives sound like they suck. There is a person, where's this person from? Uh, is it JP Morgan, John, that said that you need 72 hour work week in order to master the job. 72 hour, whoa, this is an amazing photo right here, Jordy found, I guess. Uh, that's basically a banker's job. Just be on the phone, wear your suit and tie, have the comb over, wear your cologne, and just be happy to be there. And I love that you associate bankers with cologne. Whenever you talk about bankers, you, you always talk about them wearing cologne. It's hilarious. Yeah, well, because, that, that's, because when you smell, like when you're around somebody who's just a bad person, they stink, right? They stink. And so what do they do? They put cologne on to hide them stinking. They stink like other people's money. I always, yeah, think, of the blue, I always think of the blue dress shirts with the white collars. You know, stink like, <laughs> like when, when you think of a banker, the gold cufflinks, the white uh, collar with the blue shirt, maybe a little uh, gold bracelet on like they stink, literally slicked back hair. And you're just like, get away, like, <laughs> like just get away. That's what a banker uh, when you think of the quintessential banker. I'm sure some bankers are nice people. I'm sure that bankers work hard. They're just trying to provide for their families. But if you're a quintessential banker and you walk up and you start talking about sticks, that's also a great sign of a, of a banker. When they start talking about yards and sticks, but they're referring to amounts of money, you stink. Get away. All right. <laughs> 72 hour work week is needed to master a job. Uh, junior bankers, though, they're like, I'll take a 72 hour work week because uh, I'm working a little bit longer. And so, uh, John, who who said that a 72 hour work week is what is needed? Mary Erdos, Erdos. which is Erdos. Yeah, she's the CEO of Asset and Wealth Management at JP Morgan. Okay, so she says 72 hours. That's all you need to master the job. Well, so she, I'm reading it right now, and she essentially was taking the notion of, you've heard like Michael Jordan say, you need 10,000 hours or you need 10,000 shots, Godwell. basically. I, I, I don't, I don't know if Michael Jordan said that, but yeah, I get the point. Yeah, no, he's, you know, whatever. Well, you get the point. Malcolm, you need 10,000 hours Malcolm to Gladwell be Gladwell wrote a book about it. Yeah, yeah, I got that, but it's a famous thing in sports of like, you need to X many of things to be able Just to Just because you're the sports guy doesn't mean the sports. Whatever, this is, outside, this is outside the point. She was saying that you need 10,000 10, hours of practice and devotion to compete at an elite level. But if you're a banker, they want you to do that in uh, in two to three years, or two, two and a half years. So that's 12 hours a day for six days a week. I mean, that is, I'm assuming, equals 10,000 hours. Yeah. I'm not a mathematician. Yeah, but, I didn't do that. Uh, math, but. Six days a week. Usually in America, we have five day work weeks. So yeah. they and some people are trying to go down to four. <laughs> yeah. And then, and they want you to come in on the weekends and work 12 hour days yeah. for two and a half years. Yep. All right. So let's see that that's fair. That is what the executives at JP Morgan believe you need in order to master the job. Well, hold on. She also said that if, if you work a regular eight hour a day job, five days a week, it's going to take you about five hours to master that job. Five instead years. Of, five years. Sorry. Instead of the. So they want you to do it half. half the time. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all great because those are the executives. Let's hear what the junior bankers have to say. There is a Goldman Sachs study from, what is this, a uh, couple of months ago, four or five months ago, and it is hilarious. <laughs> this study is how many hours do you work? This is in their investment banking division. Goldman Sachs, the best business show research team, went very deep in the interwebs to find this exact chart. And it says on average, first year analysts are working over 95 hours per week and only sleep five hours per week. For people who claim to be smart, they stink. Even though they claim to be very smart, they should know sleeping five hours a night is not good for your mental health. It's not good for your intelligence. It's not good for your decision making. And it is not good for your productivity. 105 hours is 50% higher than Erdo said at 72 hours a week. Well, Goldman Sachs works harder than JP Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> so how many hours have you worked? How much hours are you sleeping? And my favorite part is, what time do you go to sleep? 3 a.m. Like, this is wild. But they weren't done. That was just pure aggregate data from the survey at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs went and asked them for more, uh, what is it, uh, subjective data, things that weren't just driven by numbers. So here's a couple of quotes from the analyst. Uh, oh, hold on a second. We're, uh, the slide before, maybe. Uh, we can talk about this one first. Uh, here we go. So select analyst quotes. Quote, the sleep deprivation, the treatment by senior bankers, the mental and physical stress. I've been through foster care and this is arguably worse. <laughs> oh my okay, God. starting off the slide hot. They stink. I next one. I, I want to know. I can't sleep anymore because my anxiety levels are through the roof. Next one. My body physically hurts all the time and mentally I'm in a really dark place. Next one. Being unemployed is less frightening to me than what my body might succumb to if I keep up this lifestyle. Just so we're clear before I read the rest, we're not talking about people in jail. These are people that openly 
willingly and voluntarily take these jobs and go work here at the promise of becoming rich. Next one, there was a point where I was not eating, showering, or doing anything else other than working from morning until after midnight. That's crazy. I didn't come into this job expecting a nine to 5 p.m., but I also didn't expect consistent 9 a.m. to 5 a.m.s either. That guy's a genius or a woman. <laughs> Last one, what is not okay to me is 110 to 120 hours over the course of a week, exclamation point. Bam, hitting him with the exclamation point. But that the makes me think he's like happy about something. Yeah. <laughs> That's, no, what is not okay to me? The math is simple. That leaves four hours a day for eating, sleeping, showering, bathroom, and general transition time. Wow, they even put in the, well, you know it's bad when they're calculating bathroom time in their time off. This is beyond the level of hardworking. This is inhumane abuse. Yeah, and he's not even trying to work out or watch Netflix or anything. He's just looking for or transition party time. Or have fun. Yeah, he's <laughs> trying to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon doesn't have bathroom breaks and Goldman Sachs doesn't have bathroom breaks, right? I mean, those are ridiculous quotes. And I'm assuming, hopefully, that people know it's a survey that the executives are going to read, that it's anonymous. And so they can kind of, you know, jack up a little bit the, the language that they use. They're not idiots. They got into Goldman Sachs. Uh, and so by jacking up the language and making it be pretty extreme, they might get some relief. But talking about it being inhumane or uh, abuse, talking about it physically hurting, mentally being in a dark place, talking about unemployment being less frightening. Or the sleep deprivation, the treatment by senior bankers, the mental and physical stress. I've been through foster care, and this is arguably worse. I mean, th those are absurd quotes. So what do you think the banks did about it? They said, okay, we're going to have the Saturday rule. We're going to really try to enforce it where you shouldn't be working from 9 p.m. on Friday to 9 a.m. on Sunday. <laughs> That's what they did. They so rather and, than having you work they, they Monday through wages. Saturday, six days a week, we're going to actually let you work Monday through Friday. Whoops, skip a day. <laughs> they come back on Sunday. Yeah, you're still working six. Yeah, you still <laughs> work six days. We're just going to change it from Saturday to Sunday. And okay, we, we heard you. Like, that's crazy. Oh, and by the way, if you do a little work, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last slide here is the effect on physical and mental health of bankers. And I know there's bankers that are watching this. So, you know, you stink. But the effect on physical and mental health is rate your mental health before and after starting this job. Wow, that's a pretty big decline. 8.8 .8 to 2.8. I mean, literally from the top to the bottom, we just fell off a cliff. A six point decrease. Six point decrease on a 10 point scale. It's not like we're on a 100 point scale. It's a six point decrease on a 10 point scale from 8.8 .8 to 2.8 before and after. Rate your physical health. These people are being asked to go into an office where there is literally food provided to them. They can wear nice clothes. They sit in comfy chairs and they can stare at computers all day. It's not talking about going to construction sites, going to anything that is physically uh, demanding or potentially life-threatening. And they still rate their physical health after starting the job at 2.3. It started out at nine. There is a bigger decrease in the physical health than in the mental health of these people based on this survey. There was a six point decrease in the mental health. There was a 6.7 point decrease in the physical health. This is wild. If you have people start saying that physically this job sucks more than the mental impact and they're working this many hours, what do, what do people do? You know, uh, you know who is uh, a legend in this whole thing is, I don't want to put him up on a pedestal, but David Solomon, he's the Goldman CEO. He's the DJ. Yeah, he's the DJ. Yeah. He didn't leave, he didn't miss one day of work at the office during COVID. He went to the office every single day. And granted, you know, maybe- Does that he's make him a legend? Maybe he's taking a, well, you know, he's trying to prove by example, essentially, right? I don't think he wanted to be there necessarily, but I think he's saying, hey, look, if I'm going to tell people they have to come back in June or July before everyone else necessarily needs to, then I'm going to show them that I've been here the entire time. So the whole lead by example thing, I think is important, but no, I don't think it was necessary for him to be there the entire time. I mean, so I agree with you that it's pretty incredible that he went in. Uh, obviously, there were safety concerns. I'm sure that he, uh, you know, had extra masks. He maybe had some security. Yeah, they were sanitizing his there desk. Every day. Got a private car yeah. there. He also got a private jet. Probably go to the Hamptons every once in a while. Yeah. Spin a couple yeah. of uh, sets. You know, like <laughs> he was killing it every day on Sundays. Yeah. He's like, I'm out in the Hamptons spinning. Yeah. Sets. You guys are working Sundays, but not me. <laughs> yeah. That's where Saturday offs came from at Goldman Sachs. Was he wanted to roll to the Hamptons real quick and spin a couple sets before uh, going back to the office? Sunday. Kidding. Uh, but it's still nuts that these are junior bankers, right? I don't know what the difference is between the junior bankers and, and the uh, the lead bankers, but there definitely is an element of uh, 
you're going to work a lot if you work here, right? This is not just a, oh, okay, I'm from a junior banker to now I'm kind of a, a mid-level banker. Now I don't have to work as much, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a little bit of relief, but not much.